This is the seventh generation Vauxhall Astra, and Vauxhall says it's a completely new car. It's lighter, it's smaller, but it's more spacious inside. It's in a tough class, and it's up against rivals like the Ford Focus and the Volkswagen Golf. So what's it like? We've invited what car readers along to deliver their verdicts. It's very nice, um, definitely a big improvement over the previous Astra. Um, I like the way that they've got some of the lines that have come back into it, more distinctive lines. So yeah, very, very impressed with it there. Having previously owned a 2005 model, there wasn't a lot of legroom in the back, even though it was a five-door car, and getting into the back of this, it really doesn't feel like it's the same size car that you've just got into. There's a lot of legroom there. So you can imagine that's going to be a big selling point for a lot of people. You can feel it's definitely a lot more upmarket feel to it, um, especially with the touchscreen. Um, it's very well laid out, very easy to just work out exactly what you need to do with it. So having the car play in there is a very, very welcome feature and not something that you see on very many cars, especially in such a new feature as well. So, yeah, so where it's come down a bit from the previous model, but you're getting a lot more kit for your money um, on the same sort of trim levels, it's definitely well priced. And I do like the sound of the new one litre turbo engine that they've introduced. Um, sounds like a very good introduction to the range. I do see quite a lot of all the Astras put into one car. The, the back looks vaguely reminiscent of the Mark IV Astra, sort of like the way the boot is shaped. Obviously you've got a lot of like Mark VI in there, the angles of the Mark V. It's just very impressive, but there's a huge leap, even from the VI, into the new car. It's very, very nice, very nice quality. The SRI trim seems very nice. I might think about upgrading to the Elite, uh, just for sort of like the few extra toys, the standard leather interior as such. The, uh, the SOS function, the, the function sort of if you get into an accident, that could have some very good uses for a lot of people out on the road. Um, yeah, inside it does feel, feel very spacious, but very, very upmarket as, as well. In, in my Mark V, I have to sit in the rear seat, I've struggled to sit in the rear seat, but on this car there is a surprising amount of room for a rear seat, which you can't really say on many cars. You know that you fit well into that car and the car fits well around you, and where the plastics and everything feel very nice. I haven't really seen anything that disappoints me, to be honest. You know, even the standard spec car comes with a lot of stuff. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I am really impressed. We have Astros at work, so I've driven the Astros at work. So this is like, it's like going from a basic design to you know something that's uh, on, a, on a next level, really. So I like the face of it, especially. It's like it's a, it's, it's a, like a sports car type look. So. Uh, it's comfortable, it's got all the toys on it. I like the car play on it as well, because I've um, got a demonstration on that. Again, not many manufacturers, I think it's only a third manufacturer that's got car play. So that's a fantastic um, added bonus as well. So I'd personally go for uh, one, 1.6 uh, EcoFlex, I think. My commute is 110 miles a day, round trip. So I'd be using that, plus obviously I'd use it obviously on the weekends when I'm at home as well. So um, I do roughly about 35, 40,000 miles a year. So. It'll certainly get its use. Nice, uh, nice driving position as well. So yeah, you can definitely notice the, the extra room in there. So where do I sign? <laughs> it looks lower than the, the previous ones, and also their float and roof design on the side with the with the black bits um, that makes it look very very stylish as well. I think. Yeah, it seems to be a very very big boot. Um, it has it's very sort of low inset over the lip. Um, I don't know if that's a good point or a bad point really, but it's, it is very low in there, So, but I think that gives you extra, extra height in the boot for, for large suitcases and things like that. It does look a very premium um, cabin area. Um, it's very, very simple, um, but very functional. Um, looks very good. The, you know, all, all, the, all the extra bits that come in standard um, aren't standard a lot of cars. Um, so you know, all the you know, app integration and things like that, and the way that you can connect your mobile phone to it, in, um, the way you can actually get information about your fuel and everything else on your app when you're not even in the car. You don't feel you need it until you start using it. You know, if you go back sort of 10, 15 years ago, you, know, you had things like electric windows. People you know, didn't need that, but now you won't buy a car without an electric window. So I think it's just as technology moves on that it'll become one of those standard things that, that you will expect in a car. Looking at the, you know, the standard spec you're going to get on this car, um, it's going to be quite a hard one to beat, I think, at the moment. The Astra will be in UK showrooms in October, priced from £15,000 to £23,500. But we'll be driving it before then, so check back on whatcar.com for the latest car news, reviews and videos.